Hey, take a look at Acts chapter 7. Uh, it's kind of a big, long chapter. There's a lot in it. Um, but really what it is, is it's a speech that uh, one of the earliest disciples named Stephen gives in defense of the fact that he's arrested in chapter 6. He's arrested, um, and what they accuse him of is he's always saying bad things about the temple, about the holy place, and about the law. And he follows Jesus, who said he would destroy the temple and would change all of the customs that Moses had handed down, which means all the law. And so Stephen basically launches into this long speech that really recounts the history of Israel. Um, it's kind of a good read, actually, if you're also reading the Old Testament with us right now, because it kind of gives a big overview. And he focuses on some of the most important people like Abraham, Jacob, and Moses, and then a little bit of David and Solomon at the very end. Um, it's interesting, though, where, where it lands Stephen um, accuses the religious people who, are, who have arrested him. He says, you stiff necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to. And if you skip down to the bottom, you are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. So he's been arrested by the religious folks in Israel. He recounts Israel's entire story the way that God is engaging with um, and interacting with and leading these people, Israel, through people like Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, and Solomon. Um, and then ends with this accusation that even though you guys are the ones who like know God, you guys are the ones who have the law, you have missed it. You are continually missing the boat. You're not keeping it now. And it's because you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just like your ancestors did. This is such an interesting line um, because basically what Stephen is saying to them is, yes, you have God on your side, let's say, right? But the problem is you're not paying attention to what God is doing in your midst. You're not paying attention to what God is trying to do right now in your midst. And this is kind of brought to a head by um, the inclusion of the stuff about Saul, right? And that's in verse 58, while Stephen is being stoned, he's being killed for, you know, for what he's saying here, um, all the people laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. And this is the guy who would become Paul. Um, and then in chapter 8, verse 1, and Saul approved of their killing him, which is just a chilling verse. But Saul is someone who kind of captures, um, you know, kind of the national person of Israel, someone who had God, God who knew the law, God was on his side and he was totally missing the boat, right? I mean, he knew the God of mercy and yet he approved of their killing of this innocent man. And it was because he was opposing the Holy Spirit. Now, there's two things to say about that. One, for us in our lives, um, would you say that you oppose the Holy Spirit? Maybe you are turning, turning your eyes uh, you're closing your eyes, you're turning your ears off to what God is doing right now in your midst, right now through you. Listen, if that is, if you're missing God, now's the time for you to open up, um, open up yourself to God. Ask God, God, give me your Holy Spirit. Open my ears, open my eyes, open my heart, and show me what you were doing in me, around me, and through me, because I want to follow you. I don't want to miss you like Israel evidently missed you and like Saul missed you. Here's the other thing I'll say about this, though. As you may or may not know, Saul, who approved of their killing of Stephen, this young, innocent disciple, he approved of it because of his um, religious beliefs. Uh, even that person is not too far gone for God because as you will read in the upcoming chapters, God um, you know, knocks Paul on his butt. He opens his eyes with the Holy Spirit, um, ironically by making him blind, and he calls Paul to himself and he transforms uh, Saul's life. He transforms Saul to become Paul, who was the greatest missionary and church starter um, we have ever seen. And he's changed the world through this man. So if that's you, if you are someone who is missing God, who uh, just isn't able to see what God is doing in, around, or through you, listen, you can ask God for the Holy Spirit and you can trust that God's not done with you. Um, and God, God is still waiting and working in you and through you uh, to transform your life and to make it, um, so that you can live a different life uh, than you were, just like Paul ended up living a very different life than he did.